Okay, now we're going to look at adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. So just like with numerical fractions, you must have a common denominator before you can add or subtract. So that's going to be your first step. So taking a look down here, I've got 3x over 4 plus 2x over 5. So uh, my lowest common multiple or lowest common denominator in this case is going to be 20. So in order to add these fractions, I first need to... Uh, change the fractions or make them equivalent fractions with a common denominator of 20. So the first one, 3x over 4, in order to get a denominator of 20, I have to multiply 4 by 5. So that means I must also multiply my numerator by 5. Same thing for my second fraction, I want a common denominator, sorry, common denominator of 20. So in order to get that, I need to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 4, so I've got 4 times 2x. And I'm just doing it sort of um, in a few steps here so you can see the process. So when you get to harder fractions, um, you can apply the same steps. So now I've got 5 times 3x is 15x, and I'm going to just put it all over one fraction now because my denominator is 20. And then for my second one, 4 times 2x gives me 8x, 15x plus 8x gives me a total of 23x over 20. Okay, so same process as you did with numerical fractions. We just now have some variables in there. Okay, second question. I've got 25 over 3x minus 7 over x. In this case, my lowest common denominator is going to have to be 3x. Okay, so the first fraction will stay the same because I've already got a denominator of 3x. But in order to get a denominator of 3x here, I need to multiply the top and the bottom by 3. So I end up with 21 over 3x. 25 minus 21 is 4, so my final answer is 4 over 3x. Okay, so uh, common denominators with variables in them work the same way. You need to have the lowest common denominator, including any variables. Okay, third question here. So here, my denominators are 8 and 9, and my lowest common denominator, I think, is 72. Okay, and if you can't work out the lowest common denominator, you can always just multiply the denominators together. So 8 times 9 is 72. It might not be the lowest common denom denominator all the time, so you might have to do some simplifying later on, but it, it will work if you can't think of anything. Okay. Uh, in order to now get a common denominator of 72 in my first fraction, I need to multiply the top and the bottom by 9. So 9 times x plus 4 over 72 minus my second fraction is going to have to be multiplied by 8. Uh, 8 times x minus 7 over 72. Okay, so I'm going to write this now all over 72 is one fraction, and I'm going to expand my bracket. So I've got 9x plus 9 times 4 is 36. Now I have to be careful here because when I multiply out this bracket, I'm, I need to make sure I'm multiplying by negative 8. So negative 8 times x is negative 8x. Negative 8 times negative 7 is positive 56. Collecting like terms, 9x minus 8x is just x. 36 plus 56 is 92, all over 72. Now when I get to this stage, I need to make sure that I um, can't simplify any further by looking for common factors. So x, 92, and 72 don't have any common factors, so I'm finished. I can stop there. Okay, so for this one here, it looks a little bit different because we've got... Um, two different terms in each of those common denominators. So I've got x plus 3 and I've got x minus 4 in the second fraction. So you might be thinking, well, what's my lowest common denominator now? How do I, how do I know? So the easy way is just for us to say, okay, we, we multiply those two denominators together. So my lowest common denominator is going to be x plus 3 times x minus 4. And you don't even have to expand that out or anything. You can just leave your um, denominator in that form because that's basically our factorized form. We don't really want to expand once we've factorized. Okay, so in order to get a common denominator 
of x plus 3 times x minus 4 for our first fraction, I had to multiply, and I'll write it out here if you'd like, I had to multiply both the top and the bottom by x minus 4. So that means my numerator is going to become 6 times x minus 4. And the same thing is going to happen with my second fraction. In this case, I had to multiply both the top and the bottom by x plus 3. So you're basically, you can kind of think of it, this is a bit of a shortcut, of just sort of cross multiplying. You, you've got to multiply uh, 6 times the, the opposite denominator, and you need to multiply 8 times the opposite denominator. Okay, so that's just a bit of a shortcut. Um, okay, let's expand the brackets now. So now I've got 6x minus 24 plus 8x plus 24 all over x plus 3 times x minus 4. I'm going to collect like terms. So 6x plus 8x is 14x. Minus 24 plus 24 is 0. So I'm just left with this fraction here. Okay, and I haven't got anything common that I can cancel out, so I'm finished. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Uh, hopefully that's given you some uh, idea of how you add and subtract fractions, algebraic fractions.